Captain Mac here and coming at you by special request from one of our su subscribers Harry is a tutorial on how to fly an RNAV approach and I think the best way to do this is I'm going to attempt anyway I'm going to attempt to uh, first of all give you the approach briefing really quick a uh, pretty detailed briefing so that you understand what we're looking at here and then what I will do is as we fly the approach we will kind of bounce back and forth see where we're at on the chart if I can get a little graphic uh, graphic to pop up on the chart fantastic and that'll show us uh, what it looks like on the chart as we fly the approach as well as flying it in the sim so that being said we're looking at our RNAV GPS Y26 approach here and the first thing I want to address is the difference between an RNAV approach and a GPS approach and ultimately there really is no difference um, except that what was originally a GPS approach did not account for excuse me the uh, complex flight management systems of many aircraft and so we went to RNAV approaches when RNAV is short for area navigation and the idea was that eventually all GPS approaches would just become RNAV approaches of course that's way back in like 2005 here we are in 2015 and you're looking at a 2014 chart that shows RNAV and then GPS in parentheses still so it is what it is some basic information here um, and this is not the typical way of doing an approach brief uh, when you see me giving approach briefs in uh, our in the, 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 in the life of a virtual airline pilot videos and other videos uh, it won't quite be like this but I want you to understand this chart so our ATIS information can be found on 127.575 tower will be on 118.70 ground control will be we're going to be on the north side of the airport so it'll be 119.750 we're going to transition to the RNAV approach at Zerlo that will be our initial approach fix and then we will descend as, uh, we will be at 7000 feet at Zerlo until we reach Saroon and then from Saroon we'll turn right to 258 degrees and descend to 5000 feet towards Tadre which is our intermediate fix I believe that's what IF stands for and then continue our descent from Tadre to Jigal and down to 4000 feet from Jigal to Yaxo 3000 feet the uh, approach from Yaxo uh, we're going to try and fly it at approximately 140 knots which means we should have a descent rate of approximately 740 feet and it should take us two minutes and 24 seconds give or take just a little to reach our missed approach point right here at the runway threshold if for some reason we have to fly a missed approach we will climb direct to Ajgil Oj which is a heading of 257 degrees and upon reaching Ajgil, we will continue on 257 degrees direct to BXKVOR, climbing to 5,000 feet. This is the BXKVOR here. It's actually out over here a little ways. This little inset gives us the information for the BXKVOR, the frequency, which is 110.6. And then we would enter a hold, a right hand pattern hold at BXK until instructed otherwise by ATC. Of course, we're not using ATC and I really hope we don't have to do a missed approach other than that some information that's available to us on this chart that uh, we want to pay attention to is first of all our elevations around here uh, we have varying terrain in the area when we cross over Zerlo there's some mountains there we're gonna need to keep an eye on those once we get past the rune we begin our descent it pretty much flattens out into the valley there and we should be good to go and uh, let's see that's that's the basic information for this approach um, keep in mind it is a three degree glide slope using the Pappy lights and using this information here should keep us on a three degree glide slope and I think that's it for the approach briefing now that being said since this is a tutorial video uh, I have explained these charts in another video I posted it before this one so even though the one I explained was a ILS chart the information is essentially the same on here so if you have any questions related to this chart please let me know and I will be more than happy to uh, provide some additional information to you either in a later tutorial or simply by replying to your comments so that being said let's go ahead and hop in the sim and we will be firing things up pretty close to uh, Zerlo here 
So here we are crossing the Zerlo waypoint at approximately 7,000 feet and we're turning to 188 degrees towards Saroon. So most of this video I recorded uh, the voice while I was doing it and then I'm adding a little bit of voiceover in here partly because right now I have no idea why the video is all dark like this. Uh, it, it goes away as you can see right here but for some strange reason that that little portion of video was just uh, really dark and uh, I tried to edit it out but it just like you can't seem to get it out of there without messing up other parts of the video but basically what we're doing right here now uh, we've already crossed Zerlo we're on our way to Saroon right now you can see that our uh, altitude is at 7,000 feet and we're flying the autopilot you can fly this using a GPS as long as the uh, as long as the approach is in your GPS. So we'll continue on here at 7000 until we're about to cross Zerlo, at which time uh, we'll be changing both direction and altitude. And as we're starting to cross the Saroon waypoint here, we're turning to 258 degrees and beginning our descent to 5000 feet towards Tadre. And the nice thing about being able to fly this on autopilot is you can uh, program your uh, aircraft to follow the GPS route and then you really just need to control uh, your altitude and rate of descent and it makes it a lot easier to fly this approach and really can turn it into a very precision approach uh, which can be used in instrument meteorological conditions or IMC so that's something to keep in mind as well the approach isn't that difficult to fly which is of course a bonus in itself And as we're crossing Tadre, we can continue our descent to 4,000 feet towards Jagal. Now, one of the tricks is going to be that between Tadre or between Jagal and uh, the final approach fix is a pretty short distance, and it's also short between Tadre and Jagal. So you have to watch your rate of descent and your speed both to make sure that you're able to get down to the appropriate altitude on time. Uh, what does help a little bit is all of the altitudes are, are at or above restrictions. So if you're a little high, that's okay, but you cannot be below the assigned altitude. And from Jigal, we'll continue our descent down to Yakzo, which is our final approach fix. And at Yakso, we can be at 3,000 feet. So you can see there was just a little bit of a, an error in the, the graphic that I put together there, but basically we're descending to 3,000 feet right now. And as long as we're at or above 3,000 feet when we cross Yakso, we'll be good to go. And we can continue our descent from there. And of course, we've got good visibility, so we'll have. Uh, we'll have the runway in sight. We've already got the runway in sight, so it shouldn't be an issue. And as we're crossing Yaxo, as long as we have a visual in, uh, a visual sighting of the PAPI indicator on the left side of the runway, we can continue the approach that way. Otherwise, we'll continue to fly based on our profile that we see down here trying to maintain approximately 140 knots with a 740 foot per minute descent rate and we'll keep in mind that it should take approximately 2 minutes and 24 seconds to reach the missed approach point. We have a clear day out here so we don't have to necessarily worry about our timing even if we cannot see our even if we couldn't see our uh, pappy lights very clearly right now we'll be able to see them soon enough so we just want to pretty much maintain our descent rate and our speed. Of course, the autopilot had to come off there uh, because, for whatever reason, the GPS was flying that course a little to the left. Um, so that could just be an FSX thing. But basically, if uh, gear coming down, no, that was me putting the gear down. Basically, if uh, if the GPS isn't flying it properly and you have visibility of the runway, you've got to take over the aircraft and fly it in. That's how you would do it in the real world as well. But I'm sure it's just an FSX error. So you can just make out that we've got. Uh, 
two red and two white lights. Our descent rate's just a little high. I'm trying to bring it back up just a bit. Just messing with the trim. Trying to keep my speed where it's at. Sorry for the little glitches there. You can see we got three red lights now because we're still descending a little fast. And our speed's, our speed's a little lower than what it called for because we have to be slower with our gear and flaps in, right? So we'll just uh, reduce our descent rate here a little bit. Until we're back on track. And then uh, because we have a visual sighting of the Pappy lights on the left side of the runway there, we can just follow those in. So we're not, uh, we're not necessarily worrying about the descent profile according to the chart now. Uh, I mean we are because it's a three degree glide slope, right? But as long as we've got two red and two white lights as you can see right now, I'll just show those to you, two red and two white right there, then that means we're on that three degree glide slope and that's, that's our goal there. So as long as we maintain that three degree glide slope, we're good. And we're at 125 knots, so our descent rate's pretty good. And we're just uh, just gonna fly it all the way in. Let's bring the speed back. You see we got just a little high there. Whoop, this thing really reacts quick when you, that's why I'm actually using the trim more than I am the yoke because that was just barely pushing it right there. So just getting, uh, we got a little high. And that's all right, that's because uh, I put a little too much nose up trim. We'll get back on glide slope here in just a second. But that's all right because we've got a visual of the runway. We've got plenty of runway to work with and so we're looking good. So just fly it all the way to the ground, transition, which is very hard to do in this aircraft because it's so touchy. You see how touchy it is, right? That's just barely touching the yoke. So, come on. <laughs> come on. That's throttles all the way back, barely touching the yoke, and it just, that's one thing I really don't like about this particular airplane is, oh, it just looks like a disaster. Come on. There we go. Finally got it on the ground. I mean, you just barely move the yoke on this thing, and it just jerks all over the place. Anyway, there you have it. That is how to fly an RNAV approach. Now, keep in mind, if you're flying in something like a 737 or something on that RNAV approach, uh, you're going to go from waypoint to waypoint a lot faster than that. Um, you're going to probably start out uh, at Zerlo at approximately... Uh, Oh, I don't know, you'd be about 180 knots at Zerlo, and you need to get down. By the time you get to that final approach fix of however you say the name of it, you got to be down to 140 knots to maintain that uh, proper glide path. So just something to keep in mind, but uh, all in all, that that is the gist of it. That is how you fly an RNAV approach. Not overly difficult. Harry, I hope that this answers your question, and I hope that it's helpful for you. If uh, any of you have any other questions or uh, any comments you want to add to this particular tutorial or any other tutorials you'd like to see, please don't hesitate to let me know, either down in the comments or you can send me a message. And uh, I'll be more than happy to put those together for you. So until next time, folks, uh, as always, I do appreciate uh, you viewing and I appreciate all of my subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do so. And uh, let's see if we can keep that number climbing. We're up to 81. I'm excited about that. And I'd like to see that go up uh, and up and up and up and up. I won't even give a number. I don't ever want it to stop. So uh, once again, guys, I'm Captain Mac. Always a good time. Always a pleasure. And until next time, keep the blue side up and less performing aerobatics. Have a good day.